Hi again everyone, my name is Greg Anderson and today I want to talk just a little bit more about my solar panel system on my house and this safety feature that was added to the system. I want to tell you why that was necessary, but first we need to talk a little bit about the flow of electricity. Now, that seems kind of difficult to understand because we don't often see the flow of electricity. It's how does it really work, you know? But uh, there are some certain analogies that work when it comes to the flow of water. So most of us are more familiar with the flow of water. We turn on the faucet every day and we see how that works. So uh, let's just use that a little bit to help us understand electricity. So electricity flows from, if you're talking about the grid, you're talking about uh, some places where it's generated in very high volumes, a lot of power, then that gets brought to us through these high wires on these big towers, and that eventually gets down to some smaller, maybe substations, and then those substations distribute the power out in, again, smaller amounts on, say, like these power lines that go down our street. And eventually, well, in our case, the power lines down the street go to this pole right in front of our house and through a transformer. And then that transformer sends wires across the street to a pole that's on our side of the street. And on this particular pole, some wires continue above the ground to the neighbor's house. But then our wires actually come through a conduit down under the ground to our house and come up through a conduit that's down here below this box. So the wire then comes up to, uh, to here and the wiring goes to, to this net meter. And this net meter helps the power company to keep track of how much power is flowing into our house from the grid. And then uh, because we have solar panels, it also tracks how much power is going out from our house back into the grid. So we get certain amount of uh, credit, a certain amount of credit for all the excess power that we generate, say in the summertime or even in the wintertime during the day when, it's, when we're generating more than we consume at that moment. And then we're able to draw some credit back out uh, from, from the power company to use power, uh, say overnight or at times when we're not generating enough to, to sustain our needs at that moment. So you need a net meter to keep track of that back and forth movement. All right, so all that is the power company's responsibility and it's all their property, I guess you would say, right up to here where it goes through this main circuit breaker. This is the main cutoff to the house. Now, everything downstream from here, if you will, is our responsibility, it's on our house. But up, up to here, it's the power company's responsibility. So when you talk about the flow of water, you're going to be talking about, well, let's say you've got uh, your typical garden hose. So this can handle a certain amount of water. If you start putting too much water in here, too much pressure, uh, you can imagine what that would do. Um, you know, if you, if you put in the amount of water you would normally want for uh, a fire hose, which can handle more pressure, well then this hose would probably split open in an area where you don't want it split open and there'd be water flowing out uh, from somewhere along the hose where you didn't want the water to flow. So that's what you get when you get an overload of water in a hose, or something that's meant to conduct and contain that water. When you have an overload in an electrical circuit, that will typically just create heat and maybe a lot of heat. Well, when you've got electrical wiring going inside your house, it's inside the walls, it's inside the ceiling and the, and the floor, and in places where you don't want excess heat to build up. So, in order to prevent that overload, we have what we call circuit breakers. And a circuit breaker is somewhat like a light switch, you know, you can switch it on and off, but a circuit breaker will also automatically cut the flow to that circuit when there's an overload. There could be an overload because of some sort of damage uh, to the wiring or, you know, something that isn't right. It could be that something that you've plugged in is faulty and that causes the overload. Well, the circuit breaker, again, is designed to uh, detect when there's too much going to that particular spot and then just cut it off before you have danger of an overload. So circuit breakers are uh, rated by amps. 
This main circuit breaker is rated at 175 amps, so if it exceeds that, it's going to just cut off the entire house. Um, amps, like watts, is a way to express the amount of power. So the higher the watts, that means something is drawing more power when it's running. The higher the amps also, that means something is drawing more power when it's running, if it's a high amp device. So uh, with household devices that are inside the house, typically like a hair dryer, light bulbs, appliances, TVs, you'll see that uh, they, they are rated by the, the amount of watts they will draw when they're running normally. Whereas maybe power tools and things like that, maybe the ratings are, are expressed in amps. Um, you know, you can do some math to figure out how many watts and how many amps. But to just, just to keep it simple here, that's how we know something is drawing a lot of energy if it's high wattage or high amps. So again, this circuit breaker here is going to cut the house off if it exceeds 175 amps. And then uh, what, what happens here is uh, the wiring continues down right into about here where there are a couple of uh, big thick lines that go in and, and provide the main power to the house. Those big thick, thick lines are probably about as big around as you know, one of my fingers or my thumb. Or it's, 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 it's large like that. So then it goes in into, uh, we've got a place centrally located in the house, which was our main circuit breaker panel box. And so the main lines go into there and then the power is distributed out to different sections of the house. And each of those sections could be cut off by switching off one of these circuit breakers. Or again, if there's some sort of overload, uh, it's designed to let that particular section shut off when that particular section is overloaded. Let's say I just plugged in as many hair dryers as I could borrow from the, from the neighbors. We had a couple dozen hair dryers running in, say, <laughs> one room of the house. Well, that would be too much, so the circuit breaker would probably pop off if I tried to do that. All right, so that's, that's, a, that's a safety feature. And uh, so those, those circuit breakers inside the circuit breaker panel are rated, you know, we've got some that are for 15 amps, some 20 amps, 30 amps, 40 amps. If you have uh, an item that draws a lot of electricity, like an electric dryer, um, air conditioner, freezer, those sorts of things, then you would have circuit breakers for those sections, which are uh, higher, rated for higher amps and can handle more flow before they cut off. So in some ways you could compare that to say, you know, uh, if you've got a water supply coming from some municipal water supply to your house, maybe the main water pipe lines are, uh, you know, quite large in diameter. And then they get smaller as they get closer to your house. And then the main line coming into your house might only be, you know, less than an inch in diameter. And then that gets distributed to the various faucets around the house and places where you need water. So smaller and smaller pipes can handle what is necessary for that particular place where you're going to want the water to flow. Okay, so same with electricity. You go with these, uh, high voltage power lines that, that, that eventually come down into your house at a more suitable uh, voltage and suitable amount of power coming into your house that's then distributed with your circuit breakers, the, the suitable amount for those particular areas of your house. Okay, so here's why they had to add this to our system. As you, as you know, I've got solar panels and they can generate electricity that then gets sent out to the grid or um, if we're using a lot of electricity in the house, maybe uh, uh, the electricity coming off the solar panels will, will first go into our house and we'll use it all up there. So this is where that gets mixed together. When, when the main power comes in through this circuit breaker, then before it goes into the house from this point, this is where the solar panel power is is added in. And there are circuit breakers right here, so that the, if there's any problem with the solar panels, some sort of overload before it gets to this point, these circuit breakers are designed to cut off the inverters and cut off the solar panel system, so we won't have trouble there. But what if, okay, because of the way this is where the power gets mixed, what if I tried that experiment where I was running everything in the house, drawing as much power as I possibly could. I had all those hair dryers from all over the neighborhood. I turned on the air conditioner and I had the freezers running and I turned on the washer and dryer and just had everything I could. And, and let's say this was happening on the, the sunniest day of the year and uh, these inverters I have were running at just maximum potential. This is very unlikely that this would happen, but if it did, then you'd have 
all that power coming off of the inverters, which would be about 9,000 watts, coming to this point and going into the house. And if I were drawing more than that, then additional power would be coming from the grid through this point and mixing in. Well, you could have up to 175 amps coming from the grid plus this. And so um, that may be up to a dangerous level if I were trying to pull that stunt. Uh, when we get to this point, that main power coming to the house might be overloaded. Might, we might be drawing uh, far more than, than those lines can handle. Again, it's an unlikely scenario, but in order to make sure that if that ever were to happen, uh, there wouldn't be a problem with our home, they added one more circuit breaker over there. So now the, the route of this electricity comes up from the grid, goes through this net meter, goes through this main circuit breaker, goes here, gets mixed with the, the power coming off the solar panels. Then it gets rerouted up through here into this box here. And the only thing this box has on it is one additional main circuit breaker that's rated for 175 amps. So it all has to run through here before then it makes its way back down and into the house. So in the very unlikely event that grid power plus solar panel power were mixing and it, was and it was too much of a load that we were trying to draw in, it would have to get past this uh, kind of security guard here that would say, wait a second, you can't exceed 175 amps. I'm going to shut you off. And then we'd be safe. So that's, that's why they added this to our system. Now, depending on uh, what the, well, a lot of factors, but in your home, maybe, maybe this, uh, this uh, main circuit breaker is at a rating and the inverters you have, or maybe you only have one inverter, are, are generating at such a, such a point where that mixture would not be a problem and you would not need this additional, uh, additional safety feature here. Or maybe the place where these mix together would be in a different, uh, a different place in the overall flow of electricity, and then you wouldn't need that additional thing there. But, uh, you know, I guess I'm, I'm grateful that whoever, uh, whoever consulted on this and decided, you know, this is the design we want to do. Because I, of course, hired another company to, to do all this solar panel stuff. They said, you know what, before we sign off on this, let's just add this guy and then we'll be, we'll be safe. We won't have to worry about anything. So. It's just uh, another, another added thing that I thought I would mention. And again, I don't know exactly how your system is set up compared to how ours is set up. If we knew in advance before we built the house that we were eventually going to have solar panels on it, I suppose this box would have been configured in a different way to begin with. But I'm happy to know that, mm, well, the way it is now, we just won't have to worry about that particular scenario of an overload and, um, oh, but wait, wait, there's one more thing I should mention here. And this is just kind of a silly thing that, um, in the real world, uh, this isn't going to happen, but here, here's, here's what could happen because this cuts off the house without cutting off the solar panels. If I wanted to on that brightest, sunniest day of the summer, I could just flip this switch and the house would be completely cut off, but our excess power from the solar panels could still feed into the grid. So in that situation, the house would draw absolutely nothing. And everything we were generating from our solar panels on that day, at that time, would be going right back into the grid to give me credit for using electricity later on, say in the middle of the winter. I could do that, but I'd probably be better off just going inside and you know, turning a few things off <laughs> inside the house like normal people do, rather than cutting off the house with this main switch. But you know, if I ever decided I just wanted to be so green, you know, <laughs> that all my solar panel is going to be saved today, uh, all, all that solar panel power and not, uh, anyway, I could do that. All right, so anyway, that's all for now and thank you for watching.